Hello, back in the car and on the road. Random place to do it, but I've not had a lot of time lately to actually do videos in my office. So, we're taking a little bit of a rant on the road. So, as we're leaving Toby Carvery's car park, having picked up my Sunday dinner, one of the things I'd like to discuss is an interesting man called John Gall, who wrote a book entitled System Antics, which goes into detail of how systems, predominantly those of a software nature, cannot be built as one big bang entirety. The premise of this is now what's known as Gold's Law. So why are complex systems so hard to build from scratch? Well, there's no one simple answer to that. But usually it's because most of the people that are requesting the need for the system have little idea of, one, how it's going to be implemented or what's possible to implement. They may have an idea of how they think they want to solve a problem and therefore provide that solution for people to develop. This is a case where development teams are largely treated as kind of the code monkey feature teams. They're not empowered in any way to come up with a solution that makes sense technologically or that solves the problem in new and innovative ways. All they're asked to do is what they're told by a business that doesn't necessarily fully understand what it needs or what is indeed possible. This approach tends to stifle innovation and produce teams that are largely unmotivated. On the flip side, by building small minimum viable products and placing those in front of people who know what they need but only when they see it and know what they don't need, especially when they see it, you'll be able to build a complex system out from that point. If you in turn empower the development teams that are looking at that piece of software to come up with solutions and innovate new ways of working and test those and push them out to the business and get feedback as to whether they're working and do that on such a small scale over each iteration that the blast radius or risks of things going wrong are so minuscule that you can end up with a platform or a system where you can deploy at a very high frequency with very little downtime and very little risk to your operations. And this is in complete contrast to the historic ways of working where you end up with a release every month, six months, and the answer to anything going wrong is usually to, well, will release less frequently which actually increases the amount of things you are trying to push out in one go, which increases the blast radius, and therefore, it invariably means you will fail every single deployment. If that's allowed to spiral out of control, you end up with systems that don't get updated for years, and when they do, it's just horrific for both the people trying to do the deployment and those trying to use the system. Modern cloud technologies allow us to move away from that archaic way of working. It enables us to worry about the solutions that sit on top of platforms that somebody else maintains. Not having the headache of updating hardware and firmware and the underlying operating systems 
of your IT solutions means you can concentrate on the things that really matter and that add value to your business.